Hi folks, Paul here, back in the leaf once again. I just wanted to give you an update on the software that I've got running this range and stand charge display uh, in the dash. I've now fixed the worst offending problem whereby it would sometimes take as long as a minute before it would update the data on the screen. So let me show you how that works. Now, when you turn the car on, it turns on and boom, there it goes. So in under a second, we've got data. This is because I've now got it so that it only writes to the display when there's fresh data. Otherwise, it uh, just keeps on reading the CAN bus looking for new data. And that is a much more sensible way of doing things. Uh, the other thing that I have automated is the upper limit for the state of charge. You probably know that in winter the capacity of an electric car battery is slightly lower than in summer. Uh, here in Wellington, New Zealand, in winter the average temperature is about 11 degrees C, whereas in summer it's uh, 21 degrees C. And that 10 degrees difference uh, means that in winter it can't hold as much and in summer it can hold more. And then you've also got the slow degradation over time, uh, which means that uh, this percentage is a percentage of a slowly moving target, whatever 100% happens to be. So uh, rather than set that manually, which is what I was previously doing, I've now got it so that um, the Arduino that's driving this registers the um, amount of capacity in the battery each time you turn this on, each time you turn the car on, and puts that into a, a, an array in the EEPROM, and it stores 90, does that 90 times, and then starts overwriting. So what I then do is I pick out the highest value from those last 90 times that the car was turned on and um, set and use that as the 100% value. So the assumption is that at some point in the last 90 starts is going to be after having charged the car to 100%. And um, so that's, that's the number I use. So you don't have to faff about setting the maximum uh, capacity anymore. Uh, so that's good. And the other result of fixing the timing issues is that when I am fiddling with the settings, climate control on, AC off, uh, air coming in from outside, and then blowing to the feet only, then you'll see it gets a dashed line around there to tell you that you're in setting mode and then when you change the fan speed it switches really quickly which is very nice. You still have to manually set the default kilometers per kilowatt hour value uh, based on this number here and I reset that a few days ago so it's pretty low. Yeah, so that's uh, nice and easy to set now as well, um, which is good. So if I go back to boom, 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 and then change that back to there, that's, that's the default screen that I much prefer. If you don't like that, you can go that screen there or just the range, either way. Yeah, so that's all. That's working really well now, and that is basically finished. Uh, there's not much more that I can think of to do with that project. So I'm moving on to the next level, which is going to be this thing here. So previously, um, this display is driven by this Arduino Micro and a um, CAN bus module that plugs into the OBD2 and then runs off to a display. The new version 
is going to be uh, basically the same bottom board but with a, a Mega 2560 um, Arduino processor which has a lot more, is faster and has a lot more memory. So I can drive both this display and that display at the same time and still have plenty of programming space and memory space to do uh, more interesting things. Uh, so that's where my attention is now going to move on to. Um, this, I'll update the um, GitHub page for the, the new software, and then that'll probably be it for that project. Um, moving on to this one. All right, well, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Cheers.